Halo. Halo, Pak. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. Can you all hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. So last time yes, we sir. will be resuming from where we stopped last time. It's the indication and contraindication. Uh, Hello. Yes. Sir, some students are not being able to join. Can you admit them? Yeah, yeah yes. Just making someone else a host so that we can keep on admitting them as they are here. I'm making Aditi Parashar the host. We'll just keep on admitting as people join. Okay, so let's start with the uh, session for today. Indications and contraindications along the advantages of uh, and disadvantages of all ceramic restorations. So, uh, last time we had seen about the uh, classification and introduction to the ceramics. Now uh, we'll be uh, discussing more in detail about the indications, the process of the fabrication and everything. So indications, it is indicated uh, in the region where you need high aesthetics, like where the metal ceramics are not desired by the patient. Can you hear me? Okay, so usually in the yes, anterior, no. usually in the anterior regions where uh, porcelain close to metal crowns, at times patients do not desire because sometimes the metal is uh, visible or I can't say the metal is visible, but the ceramic looks opaque because of the metal substructure, and uh, so it just spoils. The crown is seen. Uh, like an artificial 
restoration. So in such cases, patients do desire better aesthetics and so we can go for all ceramic restorations. Then uh, the more conservative restoration would be inadequate. So even when we are uh, chosen for a ceramic crown, we need excessive amount of uh, preparation. That is the crown preparation or the inlay preparation, whatever I was going for, require is more because ceramic needs bulk to sustain. Because it is just obviously the compressive strength, the tensile strength is less. So we need adequate amount, at least two millimeters of thickness of bulk is required for ceramic restoration to be more, uh, uh, you know, to have a long life. So when you, when there is, the, when the preparation, the more amount of preparation is required, you can always go for two ceramic crowns. Contraindication, when superior strength is warranted, thin teeth, facial injury, unbearable distribution of occlusion. Okay, so in posterior teeth, nowadays we use ceramics, uh, we use zirconia for posterior teeth, but in the earlier times, we were not able to use full ceramics in the posterior region because of excessive occlusion load in the posterior region. Then, if some teeth which are very thin in dimension, uh, like the lower incisors or the upper lateral incisors, where you can, where you cannot prepare excessive amount of, you cannot reduce the excessive amount of food structure, you need, cannot make too much of preparation. Uh, you cannot use all ceramic restorations because, as I told you, you need to prepare excessively as you need 1.52 millimeters of reduction from all sides. So in such teeth which have barely five or six millimeters of diameter, you cannot prepare two millimeters from the lateral side and two millimeters from the parallel side. Only just two millimeters or two will be a after that. So in such teeth it is contraindicated. Unbearable distribution of occlusion load means when uh, there is severe malocclusion. At times, you might find patients who have cross bites uh, or ventofacial deformities. That is, uh, sometimes the bone uh, is inappropriately, uh, that is, sometimes the maxilla is overgrown or mandible is undergrown, or the vice versa. So, at times, very few it come in contact with the opposing tree. So the entire force is exerted on those few feet. So on such teeth, you cannot uh, go for uh, restoring with an all ceramic crown because the entire force of the jaw will be concentrated on those particular points. So in such cases also, the all ceramic restoration is contraindicated. So, coming to the advantages, they have excellent aesthetics and superior transparency. They have a very lifelike appearance. They are transparent if you pass an uh, alcohol uh, light or uh, LED light with it. So, you can just see, uh, you can just make, make out the difference in between the metal ceramic crumbs and the all ceramic crumbs because. It's complete, it's, uh, it's translucent and gives a better appearance. It gives slight shade of the root stump which you have prepared. So there is a lot of mixture of the shades which gives the good, uh, a different appearance. Disadvantages, it has reduced strength compared to metal ceramic crowns. So the metal ceramic crowns earlier uh, we had to use alumina ceramics as core. Nowadays, we are using zirconia as core. 
we have lithium disilicate and uh, those have better strength as compared to previous ones. Still, they are less stronger than the metal coatings. So, uh, reduced strength compared to metal ceramic drums, less conservative preparations. As I told you, the preparation is excessive. You need to reduce to one and a half to two millimeters of preparation as compared to go for metal rest, metallic restorations or the metal ceramic restorations. You can uh, go ahead with just a millimeter of preparation. And so metal is even less than that. It is brittle, of course, ceramic sterile, just like glass, they are just crystallized. So they are brittle in nature. Then scope for all ceramic restorations. Can you hear, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Great. So uh, first, as I told you, the interior crowns. You can have a look at the slides. The anterior crown, the preparation is more or excessive. It's much more than that we prepare that we need for the metal ceramic restorations. You can see, as you can appreciate the space in between the adjustment foot and between these two feet. They're even smaller than the lower central incisors. So you can just imagine how much reduction has been done. But in this picture, you can see the reduction is a bit more. Maybe there might be some other reason for that. Maybe extensive caries or something else. But it is, it is not conservative at all. So you can see the appearance in the second picture. Uh, the look of the crown. There is no opacity it is absolutely lifelike appearance there's no problem the shade selection the shades do match one more thing uh, one more classic uh, quality about all ceramic restorations is even if there is slight change in the shade with time because of the shadow of the adjacent teeth the restoration also starts looking like that at this the shade becomes same after a few days. This is called as the chameleon effect, which has uh, so the property is present only in the all ceramic restorations as well as the composite restorations. That's called as chameleon effect because in that even if the shade is slightly different because of the shadow of the adjacent to because of the view of the adjacent to starts looking similar. So in the third picture you can see this is being cemented. The cementation procedure is completely different as compared to the regular uh, metallic drums. The resin cements are used for the cementation. So resin cements are uh, the procedure is entirely different. So these, you can have a look at the posterior crowns. Then uh, the inlay preparations, on the preparations you made in you must have made inlays in your uh, conservative dentistry practices. Then you need to prepare inlay when the caries are extensive. And same is with the only if there is any fracture of the tooth where you want to go conservative, but because of the extent of the fracture, it's not possible. And you want to avoid a crown, you can go for an only. Then the ceramic inserts, they are nothing but uh, just uh, uh, you can help in retaining a restoration so they're just like uh, pins used for uh, restoration of amalgam or build up the porcelain laminate veneers so these are veneers they're partial veneers you can see they cover only the labial surface 
and a part of a parallel surface. So you can see that it has been the teeth have been the patient must have come from some smile designing or maybe she or he is bothered about the shade of the tooth. So only the buccal aspect of the tooth is prepared. And veneers have more strength, laminate veneers have more strength, so a very thin preparation is required. So this might be somewhere around 0.5 millimeters of preparation. And you can see the only the label surface is covered. Now the concept of preparing palatally has been changed nowadays. We give a butt joint at the incisal edge. So there's no palatal preparation in we find in current cases, uh, this extension has been avoided because there have been incidents of debonding of this uh, linear, uh, this kind of preparation because it has been reported recently. And hence, the laminate veneer is extended only up to this incisal where we give a butt joint to this incisal surface. So you can just very well appreciate. The difference between the two pictures, this is a laminate veneer as well as this is the fish different picture. Then all ceramic fixed partial dentures. Yes, so uh, uh, we, you can give nowadays with an introduction of zirconia, zirconium dioxide. You can go for fixed partial dentures in anterior as well as the posterior region, but earlier with Lithium disilicate restoration that is the Emax and uh, Empress with lithium disilicate or the glass ceramics. It was difficult to consider fixed partial dentures uh, for the posterior view. So you can see this uh, three unit bridge has been uh, uh, fabricated for the anterior uh, teeth. Then uh, the all ceramic post. So this post, these uh, posts are just a rod-like structures. They're made up of metal, they're made up of glass fibers, they're made up of carbon fiber, they're made up of ceramic, they're made up of zirconia, they're made up of uh, composites. Various other materials. But uh, if you go, if you see in aesthetic post, if you see in aesthetic zones, which we can use are the glass fiber ones, ceramic ones, and the composite ones. And out of them, the all ceramic posts are the strongest ones. So, if you see this, the posts are used, and the tooth structure is extremely disrupted, or there has been some trauma to the tooth because of which the crown, the entire mass of the crown, has been disrupted. And we are going to reconstruct the crown once again. So, once the root canal treatment is done, a space is prepared inside the root canal and the post is inserted. So, the drills are post, they are same as the size of the post. They are different sizes of the post, and the drills for making the space also have the same size. So according to the uh, structure of the tooth and based on the uh, diameter of the canal, we go ahead with drilling. So say for example, if you are preparing the anterior teeth for receiving the post, the anterior teeth has single root and single canal. So it has considerably a wide root. You can go for a wider post. As compared to the posterior teeth, the posterior teeth are multi -rooted. Two canals, so they have three canals or two canals, but since they're multi rooted, the root diameter is also less. So, in such cases, you need to select narrower diameter of the post. You can go for multiple posts, maybe one or two, but the diameter has to be less. So, once the post is prepared, the post is cemented inside. The ceramic posts are cemented using the resin cement. As I told you earlier, it cannot be cemented using glass enamel cement or resin phosphate cement like the metal post. Ceramic post has to be cemented using a resin cement. So, 
once so these are castable clothes you can there are also prefabricated clothes available in the market so these are modified customized clothes and these are the prefabricated clothes you can also convert them into the customized clothes by just inserting it into the clothes space making an impression over impression so that the clothes is so you have the four space here to give an impression. So once you fold this cast with stone or dye material, you get a cast and on which you can place this post directly. You can wax up or uh, the post so that it looks like a crown structure or a hood structure. So if you see this post was placed here. An impression was made, impression was made, and the structure, the substructure was waxed up and it was casted or a ceramic layer, was a ceramic structure was made by the processing. So this has become a customized post. This gets cemented directly inside this, and on top of this. A ceramic crown can be given. So you can also use them as prefabricated tools. Instead of casting them, the reconstruction can be done with some other material such as composite. The material has to be good colored or the aesthetic material, or else you cannot use amalgam or any other metallic restoration because. The purpose of using all ceramic post will not be solved. Now there is a process of fabrication of porcelain. There are different stages, preliminaries, condensation, firing procedure, and cooling of the fire article. So preliminaries consist of the manner of getting the dye out of the impression. So impression of the preparative is recorded. Dye is prepared in the refractory material. A thin platinum foil matrix is posted up. Dye is nothing but uh, you know, the, the cast of a single tip. So a thin platinum foil is closely adapted over the dye. So dye is made up of the refractory material. The refractory material is the material which is highly heat resistant. It's very uh, low in strength but its heat resistance is extremely high. So this material is used because ceramic is manufactured in the furnace and the temperature goes about 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius. So the dye or the cast, when it's a complete cast, it's called as cast. When it's a single dough, it's called a dye. So dye is prepared in a refractory material, a thin platinum foil. To Use or uh, aluminium foil uh, when you are adapting a base plate or something. So, here we use thin platinum foil which is closely adapted over the tire. So, porcelain powder is mixed with water and forms a thick slurry which is applied over the thin foil. So, once the porcelain is mixed, the thick slurry is formed and it is applied over the platinum foil. Now, is the next stage that is the process of condensation. So once you mix and apply it, so the excess water has to be removed. So it has to be tapped with a specialized instruments and the excess water has to be recovered. Because the more the water, more will be the shrinkage in the final product and more will be the porosity during the fire. So condensation is done. It is done using four methods. There's one, so one is spatulation. That is, the article is carefully smoothened with the spatula. Then extra water from inside comes out to the surface. By capillary action, it is removed by blocking paper or a linen cloth. Then, is second is the brush technique. A small amount of dry powder is sprinkled over the article and carefully tapped with a brush. The powder absorbs the water from inside, which can be easily removed. So, then the firing procedure. So firing or sintering you can call it. Once you have made the structure, it 
is placed into the furnace. The furnace has a platform. So on this platform, you place the article. Okay, this it is all uh, automatic. The platform, once you place the article or the crown which you are preparing here, it automatically gets inside the furnace. The door, which, uh, the, all the excess air is uh, removed with the help of the vacuum pump. The furnace is con uh, connected to the vacuum pump. The temperature increases gradually. So there are four st uh, stages of firing. One is the low disk stage, medium disk stage, high disk stage. So in the low disk stage, as the temperature rises, the surface of the particles begins to soften and these loose particles just begin to dry. So this is where the fusion starts. The particles become soft and they start fusing with each other. There is no volume sinkage. If the firing is stopped at this stage, the particles form a porous mass. So this is an important point to be remembered. The firing in no matter does not should stop at this stage. Then the medium disk stage. On further heating, more softening takes place and they begin to melt. Better cohesion and the slight volume shrinking in this stage. So as the temperature increases, the particles melt further. The particles melt further, and whatever amount of excess water or space is there, it keeps on uh, producing the porosities, which might layer in turn, uh, uh, let, which might in turn cause the shrinkage of the uh, respiration. In high this stage, further heating involves melting of all the particles, producing complete cohesion and maximum volume shrinkage. So the maximum volume shrinkage is in this place. As the liquid is highly viscous, the circuit retains its shape for some time. If heating is prolonged, the liquid gradually flows under gravity and article loses its sharp corners and shape. So that the manufacturer's instruction should be followed. That maximum temperature should be what has been mentioned, and it should not cross the temperature because we do not want our restoration to flow. So firing is discontinued at the stage, okay, and it is gradually allowed to cool. So once we stop, then the cycle completes, the heating process comes down with and it is allowed to cool gradually. Temperature is extremely high, it's somewhere around 900 degrees Celsius, and you cannot touch the restoration or pick it up and put it in water directly because it might cause fracture of the ceramic. Sudden temperature change might distort the restoration, might cause fractures in the restoration, it might uh, weaken the restoration. So it has to be gradually cooled. And the manufacturer instruction, manufacturer's instruction are to be followed. Okay, glazing is because we are running out of uh, Glazing is if you see the look at the ceramic restorations, they shine. So the, the wet appearance is given by this glazed ceramics. Glazed ceramics are nothing but the completely liquid in consistency and they give the shiny appearance. So they, these are the agents that protect your restoration against the acids. All whenever you have or acidic food or any acidic diet. See, glass or the ceramics, ceramics are nothing but glass and it is sensitive towards acid, it gets etched with acids. So this glazing, this is the layer, this is the outermost layer. It also gives the wet appearance to the restoration and also 
protect uh, ceramics from glass impact. So there are two types: auto glazing or over glazing. So auto glazing temperature of the porcelain is quickly raised to melt the surface particles, destroy and fill all the micro cracks. The surface becomes smooth and glossy, and its chemical durability is higher than what we used to the higher. So when the temperature is increased, the excess particles are the, the flow and fill up the micro cracks. So this glazing also prevents the crack propagation inside the ceramics. As the micro cracks are filled, it is because it's very low in viscosity, it's almost a liquid. So it can enter any sorts of cracks. So this is auto glazing and over glazing is thin layer. So there are different two different uh, ways to do it. One is when we increase the temperature and uh, the excess particles fill the micro crack, and the other is we apply the thin transparent glaze closely over, over the uh, prepared product and then it is fired. So when it melts further, it enters the uh, into the surface cracks. So next is the methods to minimize internal porosities. So this will take time. I think so we will stop here and uh, see the rest of it in the next class. You all have any doubts till here? Hello. Well, have any doubts still here?